Hi, I'm Patrice Jua, and I'm at the Liberian Parliament for an exclusive world merit interview with Liberia's youngest lawmaker, Honorable Muna Pelham Youngblood. It is indeed an honor to be sitting right next to her. I've known her for years, and I believe that she's of merit because she epitomizes what every young woman should strive for coming from the world of entertainment, uh, pageantry, to now the youngest lawmaker of the Republic of Liberia. It's indeed an honor to be in your company today. Thank you very much, Patrice. I haven't seen you for a long time. I've been very busy as a fashion designer, writer, and currently the media relations manager at Cellcom Telecommunications. But we are doing our own thing in our own little way, but we're looking up to you all as the big <laughs> people in our country. Oh, Patrice. Yes. Well, welcome to my office, and um, with the opportunity that the World Merit has given a platform where uh, young people can discuss their success and others can be able to listen and see and emulate our example, I want to say thank you for bringing such an honor to my office. You're welcome, you deserve it. it. You came to mind when this you know, the opportunity for this interview came to mind. I didn't have to look very far because you are indeed an inspiration for thousands of young women and young people across Liberia. You are celebrated in your own unique way. Mm. You've been celebrated over the years. So this is the time for the world to know that there are other young people in Liberia, aside from the presidency, aside from the war. There are other things happening in Liberia, like me with fashion, uh, soccer, so many things are happening in Liberia that the world needs to know that we've changed our story. We now mm -hmm. have a success story. So you, are, sure. you deserve being celebrated. Thank you. Thank but you so today I would like to ask you what's your big year or what was your big year? Well, let me say in my lifetime, I will consider 2011 as my biggest year. What am I saying? In 2011, Specifically on October 11, I was officially elected by the Liberian people to serve at the level of the national legislature as Liberia's youngest politician ever in the history. You know, since 1847, there has been the issues of politics in Liberia, and we consider politics to be for the old, uh, but then seeking for generational change and we came into the process and we were given the opportunity in 2011. And today I'm here at the legislature. So I consider 2011 to be my year of success and my big year. Wow, that's, she's so inspiring. I mean, this woman exudes so much confidence, enthusiasm, and passion. So uh, I would like to ask you the importance of what you're doing now, the importance of your role now, and how the different shoes that you wear and the different things that you juggle being in your position as a representative. Well, okay, my role specifically, I have oversight responsibility. I make laws. I repeal laws. Um, what do I mean? Um, looking at Liberia as a nation, there were legislation that were passed, and I do believe that it do not confront with today's reality. And so with the ability, or with the power vested in me by the Constitution to repeal laws, uh, to making it better for today, and also I have the responsibility to ensure that policies that are passed are in the interest, the best interest of my constituents and the Liberian people. And so lives of individual, family, businesses are attached to me. So um, it is no child's play. You must be able to understand the political surrounding of the nation, understand the political environment that you can be able to survive. So the specific importance of this job is the oversight, making sure that when the laws are passed, the judiciary branch of the government should be the one to interpret the law. The oversight also runs to the executive that carry on the execution of what we, the Liberian people, want. Because every one of us that have the opportunity to serve at this position um, we have been elected by the people, so we are the voice of the people. So we make sure that everything is in, in line. 
Wow, I'm feeling all patriotic right now. I, I mean, I'm almost singing the national anthem. Well, it's, this woman is very, very hardworking. And uh, that brings us to my next question. What plans do you have for the upcoming, to help the upcoming generation of young people or the young people of Liberia? Let me say, Liberia, coming from 14 years of civil war, the challenges are many. And my plans is to make sure that uh, our young people are empowered. Why am I stressing on the young people? Someone would say because she's young. No, it's because Liberia constitutes 68% of our population are young people. And so I do believe that they must be empowered, be a true education, vocational and technical training. And we must also create the opportunity for job creation and entrepreneurship making sure that our employees are well trained for the war market and we must be in a position to compete. I also do believe that we must be able to create the platform for Liberia to be sustainable and I do believe that sustainability for this nation will help the young people of Liberia, be it through agriculture, mining, um, technical, the industrial part of Liberia has to develop because we as a nation cannot always be a nation donated to. Liberia has to get to the point where she can be able to donate to other nations. And so this is my plan, this is my focus, that young people will have the opportunity to work, to earn, to become dependent to become independent instead of being dependent. And so we are pushing forward to making sure that the family orientation, building families, because we have an issue here of single parenthood. And so in order for a nation to be strong, the people of the nation has to be together. They must understand the essence of family building. And so we will continue to keep pushing for me, I do believe that in order for Liberia to get to the point that she has to get to, we have to empower our people. Wow, this is a true visionary right here. I am truly inspired. Uh, what are your words of inspiration for young people out there who've been watching you closely and would like to walk in your footsteps? What do you have to say to them? Well, the first thing I would say that I've always used as my word of inspiration that tough time never lasts, but tough people do last. Regardless of the condition, the circumstances that you find yourself as an individual, you have to rise up above that circumstances. So tough time never lasts. But when you are a tough person, you do last. And then every other thing becomes history. But I want to say to you, in everything that you do, you have to be focused. You have to be determined. Determination perseverance and persistency should be the hallmark. In everything that you do, you have to do it to the best of your ability because you never know who is watching you. Like for me, when I started with entertainment, I put up all my, my best. You know, many times I had to go to represent Liberia without support from the nation. But because I felt it was something that I needed to contribute because I kept this in my mind. It is not what that your nation can give to you is what you can give to your nation. And so I felt somewhere in my life I had to make a contribution to Liberia. So when I decided to enter into politics, society already knew that for every time I come to a particular process, I come to it with my best, so the opportunity was given to me to serve. But I want to say to you, if I can do it, so can you. Well, that's Madam Muna Pelham Youngblood for you. A huge inspiration for the young people of Liberia. It's been a, a great honor sitting here in her honorable office discussing the future of Liberia and young people in general. I am truly inspired today and I would like to leave you off with a quote that changed my life. It says, do not ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go out and do that because what the world needs is someone who has come alive. That is by Howard Thurman. She didn't have to ask the world what the world needed. She went out and she came alive and today she's been celebrated. So you too can do the same. Do you. Thank you. Stop.